Thank you for joining us for our first in our series of conversations with industry leaders. Today, we are so lucky to have Tom Kuzmarski join us for a conversation. He is the author of eight books on management, leadership, and innovation. He is the president and founder of consulting firm Kuzmarski Innovation, and he is a lecturer at Northwestern for the last 40 years. We are very excited to welcome him. Please enjoy the conversation. Well, I, um, I've actually been teaching at the Kellogg School of Management up at Northwestern University for the past 40 years, which I know you can't believe given how young I look. Um, but uh, what, what I've loved about that experience, uh, for the first 25 years, I taught um, MBA students. In the last 15 years, it's only been executives in the executive uh, education program. So I, I continue to learn. Um, in every one of those uh, executive ed modules from practitioners from around the world. Um, in addition, I've run a uh, innovation consulting practice where we help organizations develop new services, new products, uh, new business models. And 19 years ago, I started an organization here in Chicago called Chicago Innovation Awards, uh, which has now transitioned to become uh, Chicago Innovation, which is a uh, organization that celebrates, educates, and connects innovators, but of all kinds and from all different sectors and industries. Um, and then I've published eight books on uh, innovation and leadership. So, so that innovation theme seems to to run throughout everything that I've uh, I've done in my career. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I, I really appreciate the comment about how you continue to learn uh, despite being in education for the last 40 years. That's extraordinary. Um, so I wanted to take a moment to really address what's happening in the world right now. And I wanted to get your opinion on how that is changing and impacting the culture of management and leadership right now and how it's going to affect innovation as a whole while we all sort of try to get our bearings. I'd love to sure. hear your opinion on that. Yeah. Um, let me give you two answers from two of the books that uh, my wife, uh, Dr. Susan Smith Kazmarski, and I have, have, have written. <clears throat> One of them uh, is from 1995. So that's, I can't believe, 25 years ago. And it's called uh, Values Based Leadership. And Values Based Leadership in 1995 was one of the first books uh, ever written on the importance of values in the workplace. And I always love to tell this story that back in 1996, when we would go out and talk to CEOs about uh, values in their workplace, often their response would be, oh, values. Oh, did you talk to our uh, HR person? Or they would say, oh, values. We have them listed in the lobby of our, of our uh, entrance, entrance way. Did you see those? And of course, the values were, you know, honesty and integrity and quality and um, profitability. But um, one of the concepts we wrote about in 1995 that related to values was this, that every organization needs to adopt its own set of values with the exception of one. There's one value that every organization needs to adopt, and that's the value of pluralism. Pluralism being the acceptance of all people, um, regardless of their differences. And and I think that is a, a theme that we need to keep top of mind today. So one is pluralism. The second, though, comes from a book that we wrote in 2007 and then was republished again in, in 2010 called, um, uh, called uh, uh, Apples Are Square, uh, Thinking Differently About Leadership. And back in 2007, we said these are the most important qualities of, a, of, a, of an effective leader. And they are these uh, as follows. First, humility instead of ego. So somebody who's humble, compassionate, somebody who has an understanding or an empathy for others. Decisiveness, because leaders need to make decisions, but values-based decisiveness, not necessarily EBITDA-based decisiveness. Fourth was in inclusivity so that it was a mindset of being inclusive, not exclusive, transparency or openness, and uh, a collaboration instead of competition. So when you think about those 
characteristics of leaders, somebody who is humble, compassionate, values-based, inclusive, transparent, open. I think that sets up the mindset for the type of leader we think is important, uh, is really vital and critical for today. Okay. No, I understand that. And how do you see in your um, in your consulting business, how do you see that rolling out right now when people are just sort of trying to figure it out with conference calls and managing uh, childcare and just trying to figure out how to have uh, meetings that are successful <laughs> with the noise in the background. How, how, how are we able to find that balance of these amazing qualities that are necessary, but also just survival in this new environment? Yeah. Well, you know, on the plus side, uh, because I think we always have to maintain a level of, of uh, positivity and, and try to find some silver linings in the, in the terrible situations that we've all experienced this year. Um, is uh, we have become far more efficient. You know, when you when you eliminate 100% of your travel time, you know, my travel time in the morning now is 60 seconds. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, while I'm working intently all day long, at 5.30 now, I stop every day. And, um, and that's when my when time with my wife begins. So, um, and I also break for lunch, which I didn't used to be used to do before. So, uh, you know, I think now what we've all uh, tried to find are ways in which we can have a new sense of balance in our lives. And that, of course, is, has always been critical and that, that doesn't change. But I think now more than ever, a Zoom fatigue um, indeed is a, is a real world phenomenon that we have to, uh, you know, we have to balance and we have to have to offset. I think the key for companies is really doing a couple of things, though. I, I think the first is you, you have to maintain contact, communication and connection with your employees. Um, you, you have to do that. So it's not a matter of, you know, throwing your hands up in the air and saying, well, I just, you know, th there's no way for me to do that. No, you, you have to have small group Zoom breakouts, and you have to have um, informal uh, uh, chats uh, with employees, and you have to have your management team continue to do that on a, on a weekly basis with people. In my view now, if you go more than a week with, um, with no in-person like this uh, or, or audio contact with an employee, um, you're, doing, you're not doing it the right way. So I, I think one, I think that's uh, uh, absolutely critical. The, the second though, is you also have to have vehicles for listening. You know, you can't, you can't use the coffee pot anymore as the place to hear what's going on. Uh, you have to more, have more formalized listening uh, capabilities. And so I think that also is, it's just more important than ever before. So. Thank you.